Hi everybody, this Photography Locked Down Creative Challenge is a moment in time. How would you capture a moment in time? We're going to look at that in a moment. Photography Lockdown Creative Challenges are creative challenges designed to help you work out your creative muscle, give it some exercise, make your brain hurt by developing your creative thinking because what makes an image interesting is really how long it captures your viewer's attention for. They don't just skim past. It needs to be something that makes them stop, makes them pause for a moment, provokes an emotion, maybe makes them think a little bit. It doesn't necessarily just have to be a beautiful picture. And that's what these challenges are all about. If you would like to find out, click the little link that's just popped out above me right there. Come join in. It's an amazing thing. We've got an incredible group of photographers going on over there. The hashtag you need to use for this week's challenge has just appeared on the screen. So remember to use that when you upload anything. How will you interpret a moment in time? Well, let's take a look at some possible ideas. And also, what is a moment in time? Well, these are all ways you could do it. Uh, I don't necessarily mean you have to do street photography, although people are easier. We're going to come to that in a moment. This is a moment in time. It didn't last that long. It lasted maybe a few minutes. So kind of, you know, it just about scrapes in. But what makes it work is like you're driving down the road, you see a rainbow and a rainstorm behind it. Then rather than just photographing it, by the side of the road, you need to get yourself into a position where there is a shot happening, where something is going on. Obviously, you've got to get your camera skills right, your exposure, your shutter speed, and your composition, your light, all that good stuff. In this case, it was, a, it was like, oh, look at that rainbow. What can we use? It's not just a picture of a rainbow. It's a picture of where is the rainbow? This is actually a panoramic of about five shots joined together. Um, but, you know, it is a moment in time. It's a rainstorm with a full arc rainbow. This one here barely kind of creeps in as a moment in time, but I would let you get away with it. Um, possibly because the swans are there if they're a bit closer. But there's actually not much of a moment here, is there? Because nothing's really changing. This moment's going to be around for quite a while, a good 5, 10, 15 minutes. Um, so... It just about scrapes through, but it is, I'd kind of let you get away with it if it's strong enough. Now this I would say is definitely a moment in time, and it's not because of the people. It's because of the birds. It's watching what's going on around you. It's seeing what's happening. So we're seeing that little flock of birds coming in across the square as they approached, and then thinking, oh, that's going to be great. Get ready, be ready, have the exposure ready for these moments. So let's say you're watching a sunset like this, you're looking for the moment in time. First thing you need to do is to make sure you have your camera ready for it. Get your exposure set up, check things, read your histogram, make sure everything is ready. And then when something happens within your chosen field of view, you can just go click, 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 click. Maybe pop it on burst mode, capture that moment. For me, what works here is the position of the birds. If they were up here in the top right corner or swooping down low over the people, they could be lost, wouldn't they? It's because they just entered into this sort of orangey arc as they approach the sun. That is what makes it work. They're very, very strong in the image. Landscape photography can work with moments in time. This is a very definite, very strong moment in time because it involved waiting for the right moment, wanting to capture the water as it cascaded down over the rocks meant waiting for a big enough wave to go high enough and then for the water to recede and then opening the shutter at the right moment. And in this case, using a very, very slow shutter speed to capture the movement of that water and that cascade. This one was done with a neutral density filter, I'm pretty sure of that, to cut away some light so that we could reduce the shutter speed time. So therefore, we could, uh, sorry, extend the shutter speed time so we could capture that movement. But this is very definitely a moment in time. It didn't last very long. Very often when you get these rays of light, this beautiful cathedral lighting, they don't last long either. Because when you have this sort of stormy weather with the light coming through the clouds, the clouds are often moving quite quickly. 
Whereas in this case, they're not moving quickly. How do we know that? Well, look at the water. It's glassy, it's full of reflections. There's hardly a ripple on it. So those clouds are not moving very fast. They're gonna be around for ages. When you have a good old storm going on. Now, what was it that was gonna be the moment in time here? Ideally, when I shot this, I was hoping that these rays of light would actually light up the little church, but they didn't but I wanted them lining up with the church. It was capturing that moment whilst one of those rays of light was coming across and it aligned down behind the church. The hand of God, that sort of thing. So it was a moment in time. You get these little pools of light when this happens too. So look, this little highlight on the foreground makes a huge difference. If it wasn't there, if you get your thumb and just sort of cover it with your finger or something like that, it, it changes it. It needs that little highlight in the foreground. And they didn't last long. How do we know? Look at the clouds. The sun's moving. The clouds are moving. Light moves very quickly. Some of you in this group may have actually been there with me when we took this photograph on a workshop because we were driving down the side of the road. Look at the sky. It's heavy, heavy, heavy. There was a little chink in the clouds and the light's moving quickly and it just hit this shattered volcano and then it was gone. Some of you may have been there and have this shot with me, but and if you are, please comment because you know how, how, how little time we had to do it. People are really easy for this sort of thing because you have fleeting emo emotions, little moments capturing a little bit of happiness somewhere or a reaction or a human interaction. So if you're into this sort of thing, it's a really the much easier route to go. By isolating someone from a group of others, maybe framing someone and then waiting for a decisive moment when something happens. This was taken when we did a photo walk a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'm not sure if you're here, Danny, uh, participating in these challenges. But, you know, it was just a moment. Danny's composing a shot and then these three ladies came walking through and the lady on the left obviously sort of thought she was having her picture taken and turned towards him. It's a little moment of something going on. It's a little bit of a story. You don't have to get up close and personal to people in order to have them make an impact. This is uh, Marina Bay, Singapore. But the thing for me here, the decisive moment, is the position of this little tiny boat down here. It began over here on the left and moved across. The decisive moment was when that boat lined up onto this light path because that is what brings it to life. And without that little boat in the shot, personally, I don't find it quite as interesting. But that is the decisive moment, not the clouds, not the city. It's this little boat. Another example of using people to create a decisive moment without having to get up close and personal. This is uh, Sharjah Mosque in the United Arab Emirates. Um, you know, we'd seen the composition, was thinking about the shot, getting it all lined up. Then it was just a case of waiting for this guy who was walking around in front of the mosque to get himself into the right place and line himself up with one of those arches, a, a lit up part, so that he would stand out. And it was just a case of waiting. I just wanted him in position. And then, you know, I was lucky. He just sort of suddenly went hey, like that. And because it was dark, it's a slow shutter speed, very, very high ISO going on here because I was hand holding. You know, we got a little bit of movement in his hands, but he's very small in the shot. He didn't have to be up close and personal. He'd probably even know that I was there. Similar situation here was seeing the shot, seeing the angles, and then waiting for something to happen in it. Um, I was there doing a one-on-one -on -one day with, with a chap called Gabriel came over from Portugal. Um, you know, and we must have waited there for quite a while, thinking what we need is someone to come up these steps and then stand and wait on that little gallery balcony landing thing and then hope they look in the right direction. And it took a little while, but it's a decisive moment. We're looking for moments captured, so it's an obvious moment. You can do it with animals too. Um, you know, this bird had his back to me for quite a while and, and we were on a boat going through some, you know, trees in the Trasu forest. And it's a question of holding that shot as we're sort of just coming along and thinking, don't fly away, don't fly away, don't fly away. And then the bird just glanced to the left, click, got it. It's a moment, it's a moment. 
that didn't last very long. <laughs> this cat I thought was really interesting. You know, it was like I'd noticed this cat with the broken teeth and thought, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, and was just kind of stalking this cat for a while. It's annoying about the little thorny twig there, but mm, can't be bothered to do anything about it. But the moment was when he hissed at me. It was about being close and waiting and waiting and getting close. Then suddenly the cat hissed at me and we got this great shot of the, the, the broken teeth and that expression. This is what I mean by a decisive moment, a moment in time. If you're confused by anything I've just talked about, about setting your shutter speed appropriately, about being ready for the shot so the exposure is already set up, take a look at my Ultimate Beginners course because all that camera related stuff, light and composition, is all there in one place. It's why it's called Ultimate. It's not just for beginners. There are many people who have done that online course and said, wow, that's really cleared up a lot of confusion and I thought I was a more advanced photographer. Go take a look now. You can try a free sample. Click the little thing up here. So the hashtag has been on screen. It is still on screen. The dates you need to submit your entries by are on screen now. Please don't upload archived images. This is about you having a workout, not you trotting off to your digital archive and just popping up a picture. We want you to stretch that creative muscle and preferably make your brain hurt a little bit. Think about what you're doing. Pre-visualise what may work because that's where creativity kicks in. Photography Lockdown Challenges are supported by the members through small, regular, monthly donations. Uh, if you're someone who could afford the cost of a takeaway coffee a month, it would be much appreciated. If you come along, you're new, come along, check out the group for a month or so. If you think it's of value, you think you have grown your creative skills, then please make a small contribution to help keep it going because we don't really want to turn this into a paid-for membership thing if we can possibly avoid it. Anyway, be well. I'll see you in a couple of weeks when we do the live feedback session and the judging. Good luck. Take me to those decisive moments.